Do you ever wish you could witness the greatness and power of God in action today, beyond what is written in the Bible? At Pilgrim Way Lives, we collect and bring you testimonies from Christians around the world of what God is doing in their lives to show you that our Lord Jesus Christ is very much alive today. Your testimony might be the only one that will resonate with someone somewhere around the globe, so come and testify. We collect testimonies in all formats, whether it's video, audio, or written. No testimony is too small. Let God use your testimony for good. You can testify in person or online by sending us your testimony at pilgrimwaylives.com slash testify. Join us in this conquest in gathering and sharing testimonies by supporting us financially at pilgrimwaylives.com slash donate. Thank you for supporting and participating in Pilgrim Way Lives. For more information about our ministry, visit pilgrimwaylives.com and contact at pilgrimwaylives.com. The judge on record said, okay. So everyone asked, are we going to break? He says, no, I'm ruling right now. And he said, this is the ruling. Mom, you get him every other weekend on the summers. It's, um, no, I'm sorry. I messed that part up. Dad, you get him every other weekend. He lives with mom. Summertime, it's a week on, a week off. We split Christmas down the middle. We split spring break down the middle and whoever has them on the other holidays is whoever has them on that weekend. Mm -hmm. He goes, that's pretty fair. And he says, and Calvary is his church and it's on record. Amen. Exactly. <laughs> Amen for that. Whoa. Yeah, it was so good. So good. And so when I got to the car, I cried relief and Thanksgiving just to have the free, like to have a sense of freedom that I haven't, really ever had before because I kept trying to fill my life uh -huh. with men because I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be wanted. I wanted to be valued. I wanted to be cherished. And but you were already valued. You just I, didn't realize exactly. it. Exactly. I was already valued. I was, you know, I'm already a princess. I'm already loved. I'm already taken care of. The king of kings. Exactly. And so from then until now, it, it's been me and the Lord. And um, there hasn't been anybody else. Um, and I'm, when I, I did go out on a couple of dates and, and I stopped. I said, I can't, I can't go out on these dates. This, this isn't from God. This is me trying to do what God needs to do for me. Me, I don't want to step yeah, in front. pushing God in. Right. Yeah, yeah I don't want to step in front of what God is doing. Not only that, but I felt like I was cheating on God. Because I was like, you're my husband right now. Until you bring me one, you're my husband. You're my protector. You're my provider. So since then till now. That's um, awesome. That's awesome. We, uh, we lost our home. We, we, the kids and I, we lost our home. It was foreclosed on. But God provided an apartment. And he's still providing like he knows my money situation he knows this is how much you have and this is what i have to work with and 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 so he knows that so he's providing a way out of one thing to a, and opening a door to another and it's it is beautiful and it's beautiful because the kids get to see me grow in the lord i get to see them grow in the lord but more importantly, they get to see how God they get to see God in action. Yes, and how God is taking care of us, and how God is healing our extended oh, family, life the relationships. Yeah, yeah. Life is good. Life is so good. Amen. Amen. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> the other one I had um, was more of a teaching one. Um, I can't speak to that because I'm not a woman. Yeah. But it's more about um, what will you tell? the younger girls so they can avoid a tragedy mm. or to end up with the wrong person just because okay. they are looking for something. I think that's, well, that's, well, that's a okay. big thing that will change a lot, of people's, okay. a lot of people's lives. All right. So what I think is my advice to um, younger girls, girls my age, it, it doesn't matter your age. If you find yourself in a relationship where you are being devalued, where you are being put down in subtle ways, 
Yes, in the big ways. If you're being physically hurt, if your life is in danger, you need to get out, you need to get help, and there's help for you. But it's the subtle ways that make you think, am I worth anything? Is my life worth anything? Maybe I should just end it all. Who, who's going to notice? Who's going to care? If those are your thoughts, if you're thinking, well, I know my boyfriend or my husband said this, but now he's saying he never said, but I know he said that, or he did X, Y, and Z, but now he's denying it, that's gaslighting. If you're being gaslighted, if you are being verbally abused, if you are being sexually abused, if you are being forced to do things you don't want to do, you need to leave. And it's not easy. And my situation and my story isn't always going to be how someone else is saved. Mm -hmm. But you need to tell someone. Step one, you need to tell someone. You need to get help. I had a therapist. God used a therapist who wasn't a Christian to show me I'm not crazy. This is what's going on. And then I was able to make steps forward to leave in different ways. I didn't jump on all of those pieces of advice at one time because I was scared. So I think the first thing is to tell someone you trust. And it has to be someone who won't tell that other person. It has to be an anchor. Like God is my anchor right now. God should be our anchor as Christians because he is never waving, right? He doesn't go left. He doesn't go right. He's always the same. He's constant. He's never changing. He's forever enduring. You, If you have someone like that in your life, that's who you need to tell. And as you're taking the steps to either escape or to make your break and get out, whatever it is, amicable or not, you have to have someone you can say, this is what he said. And then they could say, no, that doesn't sound right. That sounds like a lie to hold you back. You need someone to help you. That's your first and most important step. You need someone in your corner. And I was faithful to talk to people that I trusted. I didn't have very many, but I knew that I could trust. Hey, this is what he said. Don't even talk to him. Don't answer the phone. That was some of their advice. When you make the break, you have to make the break up um, in such a way that you protect you, that you protect your kids. Even if that means you get nothing because God will provide for you. God will sustain you. He will give you a roof over your head. He will give you clothes. He will give you Look, Ooh. Shannon, look, 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 <laughs> look, look. He, he will, he will. God cannot deny himself. And the enemy, the world, your own mind will tell you one thing. But look, you don't want, you don't want to be stuck like me. You don't, if you don't have kids right now, what I could say to you is, you don't want to jump into a marriage that God didn't call you to. That's what I did. And then have kids and then get divorced. But if it happens, it happens. God will protect you and provide for you. But I took on a role as a single mom I was never meant to take on. So I have a lot of struggles and stresses that I take to the Lord. Probably similar to a married couple, but I don't have anyone else. It's me and it's God. But God is faithful and God will provide. Will he give me a husband? I don't know. That He didn't promise me one. So what did he promise me? He promised me everlasting life. He promised that he would never leave me. He promised he would never forsake me. He promised that he would be the father to the fatherless. 
He promised he'd be a husband to the husbandless. He takes care of the broken. He takes care of the weak. He loves the marginalized. He didn't hang out with the Pharisees. He loves you. And he has so much more for you. Amen. That's what I would say. To Amen. <laughs> now, the last one that you brought up is, uh, I, want, I want to talk about that. It's about how you said you were prideful, a prideful Christian. Mm -hmm. About that. Okay. Um, because sometimes people, all that, they don't realize that we are prideful yeah. Christians. And okay. what it ends up causing, because like what happened to you is that and when things got sour, okay. you had no one to turn to mm -hmm. that was a Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. go, go ahead. Okay, so um, diving deeper into me being prideful, um, I don't even really know how it came about. I just know I was raised... Um, my dad was not around. Mm -hmm. He was there from time to time, but he really wasn't around. Um, he was an alcoholic, and he liked money, and he liked women. Mm -hmm. So my parents ended up splitting up. But when they split up, my mom became a lesbian. And so there were some formative years of my life that were very confusing for me because I spent a lot of time at my grandmother and grandfather's house and that was not an acceptable thing it was like that was hush hush like we just that's your mom's friend kind of thing and oh. yeah and they wouldn't talk about it and um so my mom through conversations with you don't need a man you don't need a man you don't need um anyone to help you you need to be self-sufficient so she raised me to be very self-sufficient um, and after she became a Christian, which I was not sure what it was about when she became a Christian, but I knew what I didn't like because I was a teenager, remember? And, um, I went to go listen to one of my hard rock albums cause I liked hard rock. There was no album, just a bunch of album covers. She threw them all away. I was like, what the heck? Except Whitney Houston. She liked Whitney Houston, so that one was there. But I was like, what the heck? Like, what's going on here? I was so mad at her. Oh, I was so mad. But whatever. I wasn't going to go back and rebuy all those albums. And um, she always played the Christian station on the radio. When we were in the car, we were always listening to the Christian station, which I didn't care. I liked it. I didn't tell her, but I liked it. And <laughs> so yeah, so father, sometimes you my five, but you might like it. So just, just keep pushing. Yeah. And um but I I started to see um myself as um I guess better after high after high school really when I got serious with the Lord, I thought, Oh, well, you know, I know the Lord, I'm going to heaven and I felt um, kind of like I was in a VIP club or an elite group or something. And um, I did go on a missions once and I, and I did go witnessing once. In fact, that, that story is kind of funny. Uh, we went witnessing on rush week for the sororities and fraternities and we went down to UNM. And, um, the University of New Mexico. <laughs> and afterwards, a whole bunch of us gathered around the duck pond and somebody just kind of threw it out there and said, hey, has anyone here not been baptized? Not knowing what was going on. I was like, oh, I haven't been baptized. They're like, well, do you want to get baptized? And I was like, now? In the duck pond. Is right. In the duck pond? They're like, yeah. And I was like, okay. So I take off my shoes. And, um, and the college and career pastor at the time, he gets, he's like, we're going to stink. And I was like, that's all right. Let's do this. So I got baptized in... The dirty water of the duck pond of University of New Mexico and that was fun but um, I did I, I had my group I kind of had my circle right I had my Christian group we did life together we not just went to church not just prayed but we would cook together go to restaurants we would go on missions we would do fun things together and it was a very small world at my group, my life became very small. And um, 
So I felt very prideful. Again, I snubbed my nose to people who were lesbians. I snubbed my nose at people who were gay. I was like, I'm better than that. Um, people who were on drugs, people who are alcoholics, because that's what I was around. And I didn't feel comfortable with it being raised by my mom in that kind of life. Um, we had a roof, we had clothes, we had a nice home, we had, we had it all. But there was no relationship. There was neglect in the relationship between me and my mom. Mm -hmm. So it was just all superficial. So I become a Christian, I'm doing life, I'm feeling like I'm better than people because, hey, I'm a Christian, I'm going to heaven. And when I had no one after the divorce and nobody came around, nobody called, nobody checked in on me. And when I had no one, I realized how lonely I was. And then I started meeting people that were exactly the people who were in the life that I was shunning. Now you thought you were better. Yeah, I thought I was better, and they were the only ones who accepted me for who I was. They didn't put me down. They didn't. Um, they they didn't do anything like that. They just were like, "Hey, let's go. Let's. We're going on a trip. We're gonna eat. Do you want to come eat? We're having a house party. Bring some wine." You know, it was it was a lot of that, and it wasn't very very much a party lifestyle, mm -hmm. but I had community. And when I realized, and it was actually again my mom who realized, and she says, "Isn't that funny that the people who you didn't like are now the people who you only hang out with?" Mm -hmm. And um, so God did close the door on that not that my friendships with them are gone but life moves on and um and so so did i so i i realized well i'm still going to end up being alone again trying to fill the void with people not the lord and i thought well i'm setting up my life in such a way that i'm going to end up alone right when i get to the middle or to the end of it, I'm going to be alone. And there were some changes I wanted to make, and that that's when I um, I was a prime target for the last relationship for my son's father to come in and um, feed me a bunch of lines. And it's it's life. It's life, you know. It's it's not pretty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well. Thank you. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why we do this whole thing, right? Yeah. That way people can mm -hmm. know what life is really about and that it's not yeah. all roses. And right. no matter what you've done, there's still a chance of redemption. Yeah. And also that choices have consequences. Yeah. That's something that um, sometimes people think, especially when you're younger, like, oh, no, life is, I can't mm -hmm. escape it. But yeah. Yeah. Life, everything comes at a cost. So. Mm -hmm. Do you who is Christian stay that way? You go out, you pay the price. Others don't be boastful because you never know where you're gonna end up. You never know. You life, never know. life has funny turns. Yep. Yeah. Well, we're gonna finish with a word of prayer. Let's do and it. And then that'll be it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Almighty Father, that's a lot, Father oh Lord, a lot to swallow and a lot to hear. But you're the one that gave us all these testimonies, Father. Use the courage that she had to be able to share her testimonies to help someone else, mm -hmm. no matter where they are, what stage of life they are, yeah. that they know that no matter what's going on, you're still with them, and that you are the truth, you are the life, and you are the dove, everything. Thank you, Lord. Father, keep her strong as she goes forward in her life, and use this testimony to help whoever you have happy plan for. We might say things, we might think things, but at the end of the day, let not all will be done, but let that will be done. And keep us humble, no matter what we do, no matter mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. we go, no matter how much you lift us up, yes. may we stay humble now because yes. we know we can only help save other people yes. by your own life that you have in us. Yes. Have your way, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. All right.
right. Well, right. that's it. Thank you. Till next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>、Are、you in Asia, Africa, South America, Europe, Australia, or North America with a burning testimony of what God did in your life to share? Do you have a testimony you want to share with the world? There are two options for you to do that. The option one online testimony submission. To submit your testimony online, send us your written audio and or video recorded testimony at contact at pilgrimwaylives.com. If your testimony file is too large to be sent as an email attachment, such as a large audio or video file, send us a public sharing link to it in the email or include the link in the online testimony submission form on our website at pilgrimwaylives.com slash online dash submission. Make sure the link is set to public to ensure that we can access and download the testimony. Please include pictures pertaining to your testimony that we can use during the production phase to enhance your testimony. Instructions for online testimony submission can be found at pilgrimwaylives.com slash online dash submission. The option two, in-person testimony recording. Contact us to schedule an in-person testimony session by filling out the form at pilgrimwaylives.com slash in dash person dash testimony. This option greatly depends on our availability to schedule an in-person testimony recording session with you. For more information regarding in-person testimony recordings, visit pilgrimwaylives.com slash in dash person dash testimony. For more information regarding our ministry, visit pilgrimwaylives.com or email us at contact at pilgrimwaylives.com. Thank you and happy testifying. Hope to hear from you soon. God bless and shalom.